Luke chapter 2, verse 45 is our text verse tonight. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you tonight. Help us to do the same thing, Lord. Turn back looking for you. Our Father God, we thank you and we praise you. And again, we ask uh, again a special blessing as we try to bring forth these words tonight to encourage, to let us know what we need to do. Lord, we'll give you the honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The message title has come right out of that verse there, verse 45. Uh, they turned back again to Jerusalem seeking him. Uh, again, as we look at this scripture today, we, we find a familiar passage from a great story in the Bible. That many of you may know this story. It's a good chance you have read it. And, but you know... We don't just read the Bible once, we read it over and over again, because it always applies to us. We have our subjects, uh, Mary and Joseph. Now, I once had a patient. Her name was Mary, and her husband's name was Joseph. Oh my and every time I put her on, I said, where's Jesus? I said, oh, that's right, I know, I know. But uh, we always had to have fun. Have you ever lost something? And you, in your heart, you knew it was misplaced. You know, it, you, you know how when you lose something, you have that sinking feeling. It's gone. I mean, it's gone. It's kind of like your taxes, you know. Uh, when they take it out, it's gone. You ain't getting that back and everything. But, uh, and then sometimes you don't even miss it until you need it. And then you go looking for it, and then, then you find all those other things that you had been looking for. Oh, man, I was looking for this. You're ahead that. I think we all have been there. So we see tonight that uh, it was one of three times in the Bible that men, all the men, were required uh, to come to Jerusalem. If you will turn to Ezekiel. I'm sorry. Exodus. Ezekiel. Let's start with E.W. Exodus chapter 23. And God required, I mean, people say, oh, I had to go to church for three times. Yeah, right. Well, it wasn't no piece of cake, I'm telling you. But Exodus chapter 23, you know, there was things that God required of them. And rightfully so. Uh, he saved them. And uh, Exodus chapter, I told you, 23 and verse 17. Look at what it says. Three times in the year, all thy males shall appear before the Lord God. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leavened bread, neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until the morning. Again, God had some specific details and things that they were supposed to do. Well, this was one of those times that they had to go to uh, Jerusalem. Now, believe it or not, it was only a 65-mile trip. But when you're walking, somebody said put one foot in front of the other. I don't know what you're saying. But it was good. Enough. So you'll be walking out the door. Just be quiet. Preach right now. <laughs> don't put your day on. Oh. But the thing was, they didn't have the comforts that we have today. You know. We drive up here, we drive about 37 miles one way, 37 miles back. We have air conditioning, we have heat, and we have snacks if we need them. And <laughs> snacks if we don't need them. You know, it's a long drive, you know. I get here and I, oh, apparently me. Uphill, both ways, win them a face kind of thing. But no, the thing is, is that this was not an easy trip. Listen, if you haven't figured it out by now, serving the Lord is not easy street. Amen. I, I know that to be true. And it's going to cost you something. And you know what? It should. Because if everything is given to us, guess what? We become a little bit, uh, uh, feel like we're entitled. And we can become in place. So uh, it was a long way, number one. It cost them their best sheep sometimes, depending on which uh, 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 one of the, the uh, times they were required. And if they could afford one. And number three, it was crowded. 
And like with all gatherings, there was always elevated prices. Now, I had the unfortunate, uh, well, I lived in South Dakota for 31 years. That wasn't unfortunate. But for most of those years, for a lot of those years, when the rally would come, the rally this is, uh, should be starting to wind down. I know Wednesday is hump day, as they say, where everybody goes over to uh, I forget the little town, and they have ham and jam. And, and, and then that almost comes like a ghost town. And then they all come back that evening. Hewlett is where they go. And uh, because the laws are less uh, strict over there and there's not really many laws. But what am I trying to say? During that time, the prices are elevated. Something that would cost you a dollar now will cost you five dollars. And there's not even enough toilets to go around. I kid you not. And many times we would have funerals and have to wait a couple weeks because the traffic was so bad. And a lot of the funeral homes were right downtown. So being around people, and it's the same way here. People always jacking up the prices. Now they had a couple bad hail storms up there, and the prices of, of uh, rental, car rentals, were off the uh, chain because they knew everybody needed one. But you know, people are always looking to manage to make a fast dollar. And you know, here's another thing that, and I always preach against people who rent out their houses. Listen, don't rent out your place. You know, you allow, and I used to tell people, don't allow these spirits in your home just because a dollar can be made. Money is not everything. The thing is, is that, and a lot of times people would pay and all that stuff, but when people come like that, the spirits come with them. And so, uh, and a lot of times they would get ripped off. But what am I trying to say is that these were the three things, uh, again, that they were uh, doing to these people. Now, Jesus was about 12 years old at that time and was about to start his father's business. Now, a Jewish son was considered a man at the age of 12 if his father felt he was ready. And also, a lot of churches, and ours in particular when I grew up, figure, and a lot of uh, Baptists feel that the age of 12, when Jesus started his ministry, is the age of accountability. And I have to agree with that. Uh, you know, like I said, little Chase right now can do no wrong. If he something unfortunately was to happen to a child under the age of 12, uh, they're under the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, does that make it right? Uh, but that's what God is doing. At 12 years old, most children, not all, but the majority, know the uh, difference between right and wrong. And so it is assumed. Uh, that's, you say that differently. You have to be careful when you assume anything. But anyway, so uh, again, in my home church, if you, you could become a member at 12. You could get saved prior to that, but at 12, you could officially become a member, and that seems to be the number that a lot of that you. Now, when Mary and Joseph left, you know, again, they, they didn't have transportation like you and I. They probably didn't have, uh, what do they call those gels uh -huh. to put on your feet? They didn't probably have those. But anyway, uh, they did something. They made an assumption, uh, again, that uh, Jesus was with them. Okay. Now, uh, again, they assumed he was with them in their company as they took off. But after a day of traveling, you know, that's probably 10, 12 miles that they had walked, maybe a little bit further, not much more. They realized that he was not present. So what did they do? They backtracked and eventually found him in the temple talking to the scholars. The story goes on. Now, you notice this, however. What would make them look in the temple? Uh, of all places, it's probably not the first place they look. You know, now where did anybody see Jesus live? But no, I saw him down by Jacob's well. I saw him such and such. Or, you know, all these leads probably come in. And none of them were, uh, were correct. Now, my question to you tonight. Have you ever felt like Jesus was missing from your life or from your company? As you travel this road of life, you'll see it sometimes. The psalmist... Uh, uh, David said in, in Psalm 13, How long have you forgotten me, Lord? Forever? 
You know, we feel like God is not with us sometimes based on things that happen in our life. We feel like God has left us again, or we have left him is probably the more accurate way. But again, uh, of all places, they found him in the temple. Now, you better believe what it says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says this, I will never leave thee. But we always feel like he does. You know, and we're honest. Lord, where are you? You'd ask me, probably scared. Nor forsake thee, but all too often it certainly feels like, uh, again, we're all alone. Especially when things are not going so well. Go ahead, Pastor Holder. You're teaching very well tonight. We call it preaching. When you teach and preach at the same time. That's for the first good pastor friend of mine in South Dakota. That's what we call it. And then the Bible says in Romans 8 39, you know these scriptures. But, you know, why do we forget that? Let things get a little bit tough. And we're forgetting what it says in 839, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. But yet we believe just the opposite. Lord, we've been separated from you. God said nothing can separate you, not only from my love, but from my presence. If you go up to the height, I'm there. If you stick down to the lowest depth, I'm there. But yet, many times, it makes someone sitting here tonight feel like God has left them. But well, I'm here to tell you, Satan has lied to you, and you swallowed it, look, lying, and sin. But you're not alone. We all have been there. Maybe it's because of none of this. Again, uh, maybe it's because of other reasons that we feel that way. But anyway, we must seek the Lord daily. Again, we must seek the Lord daily. You just can't wait for a specific time. You know, evening and morning at noon will I pray and cry out loud, and he shall hear my voice. Again, does God hear your voice? You know, Talk to me this night. You know, think about it. Does God ever hear me? Does God ever hear me praising Him? Does God ever hear me thanking Him? Or does God only hear me when I need something? Mary and Joseph needed to see and ensure Jesus was in the midst and in the present. But you know what? Many Christians make the same mistake that Mary and Joseph made. They, they assumed Jesus was there. So they headed out. You know, we have a thing at the house that we try to do. And that's not patting ourselves on the back. But when we get in the car <laughs> and driving with Nebraska drivers, you better pray. I'm telling you. <laughs> we pray and say, Lord, give us travel mercy. Help me to stay alert behind the wheel. That kind of thing. Uh, you know, like I said, I'll just go like this. But anyway. And then when we get in the churchyard, a lot of times you'll see us, uh, you know, with our heads bowed before we get out, thanking God that he answered that prayer. We don't know how many times that God has protected us. But I encourage you, don't leave home without the old, now like you said, the old Carl Malden who always had that old, you know, gangsta hat on, you know, American Express. Don't leave home without it. You know, don't leave home without it. Don't do anything without seeking God. It tells us that. It encourages that. James chapter 4 verse 15 says, For that ye ought to say, If the Lord will, we shall live and do this or that. But many times we assume. Again, I've said this from this pulpit. That's where the statement, Lord willing, kind of uh, arose from. Because if it's God intent, all the devils in hell can't stop. Remember that. It was God intent, and little Jace would rise up from his illness, and here, here he is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Again, so we see here that uh, that's what we need to do. But many times we assume and think that, you know, like I said, I'm tell you one of the most dangerous things you do three times a day on average every day, and that is to 
And I said, really? Yeah. When you swallow, one flap closes off, you stop breathing for a quick second. So don't swallow long, you pass out. And then you swallow. Then the other, it opens up. When you, when you coordinate them at the same time, that's when it's, you say, it went down the wrong pipe. It really did. It went into your lung. You need that. And the thing is, that's why you start coughing, because the body knows, hey, I got to get this out of here, because that's a, that's a medium for uh, bacteria and pneumonia. Oh, on your ain't good either. Fun with that tonight. Go ahead and laugh. <clears throat> so, again, uh, chances are you started out like Mary and Joseph, assuming Jesus was, was there. Don't you know Satan loves it when we do that? Why? Because you don't have on all your armor. You ever looked at that chapter? All these pieces of armor we're supposed to put on. But we run out and we don't have on our, our breastplate of righteousness or feet shod and, and peace and all those things. And then we, we're easy victims. You know, you ever ran out and uh, didn't have your coat? And here in a few weeks, the Nebraska wind will let you know that they probably need your jacket or coat. Now, and even now I'm getting, uh, you know, acclimated to the whip. So what am I saying to you is that, listen, God has provided armor for us. Put on, as we used to say down south. Put it on. You know, don't, don't go out without praying. Don't go out without thanking God. Don't go out without asking God's mercy. Because, you know what? The Lord, he delighted in, in every morning. Knew is his mercy. That he, he blessed be the Lord who daily loaded us up with bitter Daily. I mean, you don't have to, you, you know, I don't mind eating the same thing every day. Spaghetti. Every day. And now, you know, that's the one thing about being on this diet. I completely got rid of pop. I haven't had a piece of bread in so long, I can't even spell the word. That's wrong. But, you know. But what am I saying to you again is that, listen, God has provided for us all the things we need to fight against the devil. But when we go out with some, oh, that's okay, I got this, that's the worst thing you can do. Satan loves it when you say, oh, this, and don't make this mistake. Every man in here has probably done it, oh, this won't take long. Huh, two days later, two <laughs> weeks later, and we're still working on it. You know, I'm just saying is Satan loves it. My point is this. When we decide that, hey, I don't need this. We know Jesus is with us. I'm a Christian. You need to pray. Fill my cup, Lord. I lift it up again. So, as again, Satan loves that. Uh, the Lord has provided an open veil for us. That we can go anytime. Hebrews 4, verse 16 says, let us therefore come boldly. Unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. There again, we have an open door policy. Use it. You know, he's provided it for us. But as I often mention, as it said in Psalm 62, 8, another one of my many, many favorite verses. And it says this, that trust in him at all times. You people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Think about it. So there again, we have all these options. Another one, 1 Peter 5, 7. Cast your care upon him, for he care for you. We again have another option. Again, all these verses are inviting us to come. Yet, we head out without checking with Jesus. Wait a minute. You're going to need mercy. You're going to need grace. You're going to need help. You're going to need all those things before the day is over. You can write it down. And God said, come on here. Let's start this thing off right. You know, come on and pray. Let, you know, cast your care on me. Tell me what you're afraid of today. Tell me what you, pour out your heart before me. I'm here for you. Every morning, I can just see him say, well, nobody showed up. Nobody showed up. So, what else does this verse say to us? Just like Mary and Joseph had uh, Jesus with them, they did not really seek him. And we ain't much different. We're not. You know, if we're saved tonight, we see we have Jesus with us and with us. But are we again totally, and we have him available for us, yet we seldom seek him unless there's some problem. We'll call on him then. Oh, God, help me. You ever notice? <laughs> I always get a kick.
kicked out of them. People say, I don't believe there's a God. You ever heard that? And then what's the first thing you see on TV? Oh my God! Wait a minute, you just said you didn't believe there was God. What you call him on him for? You know, what am I saying is, folks, is that, again, don't wait for something to pull you down before you realize, I need to call on the Lord. No, I need to call on him daily. The Bible says, you've heard me say it many times, pray without ceasing. The Lord says that also in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, and he spake a parable that men ought to always pray and not faint. Yet, many times, we don't do that. So, again, uh, they, they saw, seldom sought him because he was already there. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 12 says this, For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Have you not, have you had a face-to-face -face meeting with Jesus today? Think about it. Did I pray today? Did I just quickly say, now, uh, Lord, thank you for this food, and amen, or something like that. If that's the only prayer you had today, shame on us. Because we need to seek him all the time. It doesn't matter if you're the pastor. I'm not exempt. If anything, there's arrows uh, or, or targets sticking on the back. We have several arrows that have probably tried to pierce through today. Thank God for his protection. Again, you know, we need to seek God all the time. And I need to have my face-to-face -face time. Maybe you assume some things. Have you ever felt that something was missing? Just something's not right. It's maybe because we didn't have a face time with the Lord. You got up, you were running a thousand miles a minute. I always tell people, I had enough time for uh, I had a thousand things to do and only enough time for 999. That means something was going to get left out. So what am I saying to you folks is that listen, it doesn't matter what we do. Even if we're running late, just be five minutes later. But you need that face time with the Lord. You're late already anyway. You ever ran late and you feel like you're running late the rest of the day? I mean, it's like you finally get there and then you, it's like you can't slow down. Yet again, something is missing. Maybe we didn't have face time. Point number two tonight, turn back. The Bible says that Mary and Joseph turned back again to Jerusalem. And we have to go back where we might have left off from walking with him. Again, as I said earlier, retracing our steps. When you lose something, I didn't say that, but I meant to say it. You know, you start thinking, now, where was the last place I was at? You know, maybe I was over here. No, not there. Maybe I was over here. No, it's not there. But you go back, you retrace the steps until you find it. Because you know in your mind it's not lost. But there again, we need to retrace our steps. Uh, like I said in the, in the intro, I was supposed to. Uh, you know, retracing our steps until we find it. So, so what makes us turn away in the beginning? You see, it's one thing to turn back. But why, why do we turn away? You know, I'm always like, what made me, what was that point where I got tired of God? Do you know people do that? I remember when I first started preaching at Sturgis, and after about six months, the, people, the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, the people are tired of the truth. That's a bad place to be. You know, but that's what was happening. And yet again, that didn't mean I get up and start lying, but the point was the Holy Spirit was letting me know people are getting tired of hearing about the word of God, what it said. You know, so what, what made me turn away? Maybe my routine was so busy. Maybe my daily routine has, has changed or my shift has changed. And, and maybe we're trying to cram so much into our day. Anybody ever have a day like that? I, I know we do sometimes. You know, it seems like the more you get done, the more is asked of you. But yet again, that's one of the reasons. Uh, our agenda changes. Uh, again, they, their agenda changes. You ever gone on a trip? And, you know, it, it's, it's great. You know, like when we were driving to South Dakota, man, I tell you, we were cutting up and acting silly. And it didn't take much for me, you know, but... Uh, we, were, we, were, we were having a great time. We got up there and saw that welcome to South Dakota. Oh, we're home. You know, we're having all kinds of fun and stuff. 
is a result. And all that joy. But then when we had to come back, you know, after you come back off a of vacation, the trip is not the same. Usually you don't spend all your money. I didn't have to spend too much. We stayed with someone, and fed us and everything. It was up there at Terry Peak. It was nice and cool. And ski. Black people don't do too much ski. We ain't seen too many brothers on, on the ski slope. You probably won't. And there was no snow. The tent I mean, wouldn't have anyway. But it was just nice. But when you come back, you know, and the same thing. They had went. They had fulfilled. It probably wasn't that fun going. You know, it's just like a lot of times, people uh, don't enjoy coming to church, but they come. And I appreciate that. But sometimes you have to make yourself, you have to determine. But the bottom line is, is this, is that they were on their way home, you know, and they, they were walking back, and it was hot, and the road seems like longer, there's no excitement now, because at least when they got there, they know it's going to be a festival, unfortunately it wasn't supposed to be like that. But yet again, they're on their way home, everything is, is changed. Uh, and so they're not as excited about returning home uh, as they were. So again, they turn back. But maybe sin has crept in that has made you turn away. You know, this it's just like in the book of, of Joshua, where you see that the battle of Ai that they had lost, Joshua told, uh, uh, God told Joshua, have the people bring, come by. And Give him praise. And when he got to H, and, you know, it's hard to praise God when you got to see him. Like, I'm just here to tell you. You know, you can try. You know, and that's how that's how they found out. I mean, God just pointed them out. You can't properly praise God when you know you are doing something wrong because your mindset says, you know, and Satan's going to let you know. Now, I'll look at you. You up here trying to praise God just a few days ago or hours ago, you were doing this or that, the other. Listen, sometimes we turn away because we're guilty and we haven't confessed our sin and we need to get that squared away. <clears throat> so, again, why? Maybe because we stop reading our Bible, attending church, or, or we let something slip. The Bible warns us about that in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 1. One says, we ought to give earnest heed to the things we have heard, lest at any time we let them slip. You know, we got company. All those things. Listen, don't let your company bring them to church. You know, my daughter got married. I got to marry her. had a great time. They decided they were going to open presents on Sunday at our house. I said, that's fine. But at quarter to five, I said, we love you. heading up to uh, Blair. In the presence of way. They've been sitting here all that long, but man, I tell you, folks just kept in the presence. I'm in the house and everything. And all that. Listen, you've got the purpose in your heart. I'm not going to let anyone or anything keep me from serving the Lord. You know, yes, there's time for all those other things, but now this is His time. If it's five, ten minutes, don't let nothing get in there. You know, I'm telling you the truth. I wouldn't dare tell you something that's not. It's safe to say that when they went back, they looked purposely everywhere for them. It's sad that many people only look for the Lord when something is wrong. I said that earlier. But we must remember what Hebrews chapter 6 says, first part of that, but without faith it's impossible to please Him. And he that seek God must diligently seek Him. You know, the thing is, is this, God can be found. But are you willing to stay with him? Man, I was out there cutting grass a little bit in my yard. I don't have a lot of grass, thank God. I have a lot of mulch, and I need to put out some more. And it was hot. And, man, I had to get that guy there, and I said, God, I'm going to get some more of this done. But you got to stay with him. You know what I'm saying? It's just like you ladies, that, and, and gentlemen, too, that clean the house if there is such a thing. <laughs> I thought I'd say that. I thought the ladies would say amen. And you have to diligently clean it. Wouldn't it be nice if you only had to clean the house once a year? <laughs> ah, that ain't happening. You have to stay after it. Or else the cobwebs start creeping in. And the ants and, uh, uh, you know, and all those things. So what am I saying to you? You have to diligently stay after your testimony. You have to diligently stay in the Word of God. 
You can't just hit and miss. Well, maybe next week when I got time. You'll never have that time. Satan will see to it. Something will always go wrong. But we must diligently seek him. And especially not only when times are bad, but with the whole heart. God, can you help me? I got to go. See ya. Wouldn't want to be here. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5, Nevertheless, have I somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do Like I said, most of the time, we know where it was when we turned away. We do. We're not ignorant. Well, you know, I got mad. Somebody said something to me. Well, forgive them and move on. Satan will use anything, anyone, even the chair didn't even fit right. I sat down and, man, I didn't feel right. I ain't going there no more. It don't take much to get people out of church. Remember, then switch to chair. Do whatever. Repent. You know, go back. The Lord wants us to repent and find the very place that we left his will. Where was it? Maybe, you know, there was a point in time where you used to do this or that for the Lord, but you don't do it anymore. When did that start? Why did it start? And what are you going to do about it? Amen? You know, I like it. After a while, he'll be able to say amen. <laughs> you know, they started at eight. I used to, uh, I used to love to watch uh, Scooby-Doo. Scooby-Doo would go, hey. <laughs> and we had a little girl in our in our audience about six years. And she was my number one fan. After she started to talk, I go, yeah. And she goes, yeah. And everybody would laugh. You know, we'd have fun. But what am I saying to you folks? We need to find that place where we left God off. Was it here? Lord, and maybe you forgot who, but Lord had it. Lord show me and help me to get back on track. Amen. Forgive me. Remember, Jesus hadn't left Jerusalem. And in reality, they shouldn't have left either. You know, they should have checked. You know what? Jesus never leaves us. You know what I'm going to say? We need him. We get too old for that, young people. Oh, yeah, I'm a teenager now. I, got it. I know everything there is to know. And by the time I'm 20, there ain't nobody going to tell me nothing. And by the time you're 40, you can't remember your name, huh? <laughs> That's why us nurses wear name tags. They go, why are you right there? I said, I remember who I am. Just kidding. But what am I saying to you folks is that sometimes we just, <clears throat> again, we leave Jesus. Don't leave Jesus out. You can't afford to. Oh, we think, oh, I, I got this. I'll never forget. I, you know, if you have news, I, I have kind of full of stories. I, they, they just come to me sometimes. But I remember Mrs. Ellis, 11th grade, uh, junior high school, and Miss Teacher. And me, Mark Walden, and Dennis Barron, we were the Turks. And actually, we were the Turk group. A group of big group. But we would sit in class sometimes and cut up. And we were straight A students. And I never forget, one time I got caught. And Mrs. <laughs> Mrs. Ellaby, her hold oh boy, no, no, no. you're going to make me lose my religion up here. And I started to ask her, you can lose your religion, but I wouldn't, you know, it wasn't going to be a funny time. But what am I saying to you is that we leave our religion places that we should. You can't lose your faith, but sometimes we want to set it aside so we can do our own thing. See what I'm saying? No, I Again, Jesus never leaves us. We leave him. Maybe you're here tonight and you've left without Jesus. How many times have you tried to operate without him? Oh, you didn't even think about it before. And how many times did it go wrong? Ooh. Simply because we God Jesus. Like I said, they left. Without him, they return seeking him. You see, again, when Joseph and Mary found Jesus, if you look 
back over here at, at our chapter 2, look at verse 49. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wished ye not that I must be about my father? Had they forgotten? You see? Uh, again, the same is true in our life. If we expect to, to, to walk close with the Savior, we're going to have to stay close to the Father's business. You see, they left him and the business. And, and we're going to have to, to stay close and, and return uh, to faithful service to the Father's business. Uh, they didn't understand, although they had witnessed his miracles <coughs> and, and all these things, and they had even, I mean, come on, they were there from the beginning. Mary and Joseph witnessed the miraculous birth. But how many times have we witnessed things that were miraculously in our lives, but yet <coughs> we forget his business? As soon as we get what we want, thank you, see you next time. You know, we're on our way. Again, didn't you know that? He said, we're going to stick close to him. We've got to stay close to the Father's <coughs> business. They did not understand, again, uh, they had living in Egypt and seeing all those things that he had done. They started to take Jesus for granted. Well, you know he turned the water into wine. I imagine, I've always thought, what did it be like having Jesus as a brother? It really was a good in two shoes, wasn't it? <laughs> you know, or good in two sandals, or whatever. They probably didn't have shoes. But I'm saying this saying, oh man, but something happened. Well, I know Jesus did. You know. <laughs> what you gonna do? Blame Jesus? Jesus, Jesus did it. No, he didn't. You know, but what am I saying to you? After a while, you start taking Jesus for granted. Listen, you don't need to do that. We need to always humbly come before him, saying, Lord, have mercy on us. As we read the scripture tonight, again, bless us. Be merciful to us. We need it, Lord. Oh, God, yes, I do know you can do these things. You've done it before. I understand that. But we still need to pray and asked his forgiveness, asked his help. And it made much, much different than Mary and Joseph. We need to let the Lord order our steps. Yet many times, we intend on stepping out on the Bible says, Psalm chapter 37, verse 23, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. He delighted. You know, I've said it many times. Lord, what would you have me wear? What would you have me say? Oh, really, Pastor? Oh, really, Pastor? Yes. What would you have me do? What would be a blessing? You know, or are we too busy? We just wear what's clean. I've been there. Thank God I have a lot of things that I have chosen. But what am I saying to you, folks, is we need to let the Lord order our steps. We'll make better steps. Does that mean we won't ever fail? We won't ever make a mistake? No. But the Lord has said, you know what? The righteous follow seven times, yet they rise up again. God plans on forgiving us if we'll ask them. And keep, aren't you glad that Jesus just don't hold it over my head that you made a mistake back in 1904? Some of you are not as old as I Anyway, but some of you are. So what am I saying to you? We need to let him direct our steps. Here's another point. We're almost done. They knew where to find him. When they discovered that Jesus was missing, they eventually uh, found him in the temple three days later. They figured they tried everywhere else. They go, he came to one other place. They did not find him with family. They did not find him with uh, the treasure or anybody else. My question to you tonight before we end, something isn't quite right in your life. You have been seemingly going through the motion. And again, you know where to find it. You know where to find it. You know. 
again. I believe that because Joseph and Mary turned back to something I really believe. They were gone sometimes. I'll never forget. One time I was coming from the reservation. Well, actually, I stopped at a store. And it took a little longer in the store than it normally would take. And I took off. And had it been 10 minutes earlier, there was a drunk driver who had wrecked. And the Lord said, I seriously believe, because they turned back, that God protects you. We don't know some of the things that are out there to get us. But because they turned back, God gave them a blessing of finding Jesus, but I also believe he protected them, perhaps from something else even worse. Now, I can't prove that, but I know it has happened in my own life. And I know you probably have seen it in your own life. If you'd have left a few minutes early, right over the hill, there was a bad wreck. You know, that kind of thing. So, again, that God kept them from something terrible. That would have happened. What am I saying? Jesus had a perfect will for our life. Again, could it be you need to turn back around? Get down on your knees. You see, when we depart from the Father's will and decide rather to pursue our own, we might very well find that Jesus is not walking as closely with us as, we, as he was. David said, I read the scripture many times. Search me, O oh Lord, and know my heart. Try me, O oh my heart. And see if there be any way in me. And lead me in the way of the past. That should be our, our prayer. Maybe we need to turn back and seek him tonight. Maybe we're assuming that Jesus, yeah, we're saved. But. Maybe we're assuming that Jesus is near as he always been. Listen, if you've got sin in your life, I guarantee you, you're out of fellowship with him. It doesn't matter. You'd be surprised how many Christians buy a lot of Jesus. Depending on him, you don't need that. Like I said, you're not going to win. All you're going to do is tarnish your testimony. The Holy Spirit's going to say, you shouldn't have done that. Listen, I'm not just using a lot of tickets. It can be anything. Listen, that's why we need to say, Lord, forgive me. You know, sometimes I find myself doing this, and I know you might do it too, but I forget to pray and say, Lord, forgive me. I sin. You hear what I'm saying? You know, I don't have it all together. And neither do you. Amen. I'm not proud of that. We talked about that in Romans chapter 7, verse 18. The things that I should do, I don't. And I'm just paraphrasing in a bad way. And the things that I would, I, you know, I would not kind of thing that I know better. But we keep pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. All his power tonight. All eyes closed. Again.